Sure. Affinity Extra, be extra. AMC Gospel Choir is one of the UK's top live performance gospel choir. Their voices, full of power and soul, are a perfect match for the UK's most relentlessly pioneering orchestra, the Manchester Camerata. And to top it off this year, they'll be in concert at multiple UK venues. And to tell us more, I'm joined by the director of AMC, Audrey Lawrence Mattis. Hey, good evening. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, yeah, very good, thank you. It, it's really good to speak with you. Um, you know, you're, you're known as uh, an inspirational choir director and music leader. Uh, how, how did you first get into to music? Wow, first get into music would have been a family thing. Okay. So we were very much a singing group before we even performed anywhere official. And we went to... New Testament Church of God. I was born in that church, I guess. And my sisters and aunt and cousin and friends, we just harmonized together. So I was always one of those little bossy chicks that would be telling everybody who who should sing which part and all that sort of stuff. I, I've been doing it ever since I was very, very young. And apparently a music teacher of mine, who's still a friend, he now lives in France, he told me, that I actually created a group at my junior school, which wow. I really can't remember. I was about probably nine, eight or nine, and I created some singing group and taught people harmonies and stuff, and we sang. I have no idea what it was, but he remembers it vividly, and he told me about it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I was doing it at home. I was doing it at school. I was doing, doing it at church, and the it I'm referring to is arranging voices. So you've been doing this for a while, and... Um... You're still here continuing to spread the good news through, through music as well. So just when you said about the description of your music teacher telling you what you did, how would you describe who, who Audrey is? Who I am now at my big age? Yeah, who you are now, yeah. <laughs> um, a vivacious, interesting 60-year-old, somebody who does everything that she wants to do and invites people to come along. I'm very much a sociable person, private, but when I'm ready to socialize, I want to socialize. So that tends to be based now, mostly around music making. So I've just come back from Newcastle and I was with a whole host of over about 160 singers in, in one room. And I would never know them if it wasn't for the fact that I was into music and teaching or arranging or sharing in musical forums. So I think I'm not quite a hundred percent music. I'm also business oriented as well, but everything is pretty much, yeah, around the creative arts or, or my financial life is based on the, the, the way that I, that I work around music. That's quite incredible. So you know, not just from being in a choir, but you, you, you network with people with other, uh, of the groups as well and bring them together? Is that what you do? So I've got a business that I created back in 2007. Prior to that, I was mommy and you know, living that whole mom, wife life, predominantly that. Yeah. And um, went back to college and studied before I had the children, actually. I started a course um, at Birmingham Conservatoire, studying music there. After, oh gosh, so many iterations. My main job, my first job was as, as an accountant. Then I went back to study because I really was interested in music much more than accountancy, believe it or not. <laughs> and I had a chance to do a degree, but I'd already got married. So I decided to still have babies. And by the time I left and graduated, I had one baby and one on the way. Then I moved to Manchester and pretty much just chilled, looking after the children, kind of chilled. But I had already started AMC in 1993 when I was studying. So that was um, on hiatus back burner for a good few years until the children were old enough for me to really get back into it, which is about, mm, I'd say around 2004. And then within a few years, I gave up the job I had then and went full time into music. So I've got the choir, which is a, a very decent percentage of what I do. I also teach at university and 
schools as well but when i'm at schools and some of the other projects that i take on board like this thing i'm doing in newcastle at the moment i'm working for myself so i'm i guess a consultant i'm actually on this project right now i'm a co-conductor i'm helping to prepare those 160 singers who are actually from four four different choirs come together to perform a, a classical work and because of what I have delivered for them in the past, have you heard of an art centre in, in Gateshead, Newcastle called yes. The Sage? Yeah. Have you heard of that? Well, it's changed name. It's now called The Glass House. And that's who's commissioned, got my contract at the moment. I'm contracted to work alongside their main conductor, preparing these choirs to come together to do a performance of Tippett's Child of Our Time this coming weekend, next weekend. So I've been doing that since September. It, it sounds I do in- projects like that. It sounds incredible. I, I mean, there must be just as you're talking, I'm hearing the kind of uh, the kind of excitement, the uh, the positivity that you're 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 bringing and getting from doing that as well. It must be quite quite rewarding for you. It's very rewarding. It's also quite challenging. I won't go into it now. I'll tell you privately, but. I've got a couple of LinkedIn articles to write about my experiences doing work like this, where they've brought somebody in because of what they're going to bring and what they're going to add. It's value added, obviously, otherwise wouldn't bother asking you to come along. But then they find themselves challenged by the fact that I am this black person who brings a whole host of history with me. And if we're going to be singing some spirituals or something that harks or alludes to a spiritual song, I'm going to want you to understand where the spirituals come from and what those words all mean so they're singing along and they're jotting along and i'm like you know what this song's about okay so they were in the cotton fields and i'm taking it right back like 300 years or whatever they're in the cotton fields and you know it's a bit hot they couldn't get all the water and you know you couldn't just say excuse me master could i have a break and i'm breaking it down i'm trying to be nice about it but i'm going in howard mm. and i'm making you understand that some of these songs that you're singing with this little lilt and jolly sense of of um interest this is what we're going to bring to it they were crying out to be rescued they were about to escape they Mm. were going to send a message to another plantation by singing loudly enough to say the water is still tonight you know um deep river my home is over yonder it's all coding and you know underground railroad and stuff these people don't know why would they know some of our people don't really know everything so why would a whole you know out of 160, 70 people, I'm a black person. There's another people of color. There are less than five. There are five of us in the room. If, if there are five out of the 170. Wow. Okay. So I'm talking about people who are happy to join in with music and allow me to help them share and experience music in, in a very real way. But when my reality hits the tape, hits the floor, it's, it can be quite challenging for them. Do I back down? No, I don't back down. I get very posh. I don't get indignant, (laughs) but I hold my ground. And there was a particular incident that happened a couple of weeks ago, which, you know, for another person, maybe younger in the craft and not as, um, what's the word? Seasoned. Seasoned, prepared to fight. Okay. So I was prepared to have a tussle with this person who decided to question the way that I was teaching them something. I wanted them to feel and to sense, have a heartfelt yearning and borrow some of the sensations of the reality and the authenticity of the work. And he just wanted me to do a straight four, four, but beat with my hand so that he would know where he was. I said, I'm not doing that because I want you to sense it for yourself. Mm. Count different way and feel it and he didn't want to do that and I think everybody around me would would really benefit from you doing it that way because and I'm like if that's what they wanted me to do they wouldn't have paid me to come they could have got that from your conductor who's here already so if you don't mind just follow me for a moment and he had another go and then some eyes are looking at him like shut up (laughs) and then after that um I had a queue of people waiting to tell me well the bravo Audrey bravo you know, telling me, well done for sticking up and for sticking to my, my storyline, which was, if you're going to sing this and be really in it, you're going to have to do some things differently. Otherwise, why are we doing this? Why am I here? 
So that's happened. And I've had loads of support. And even last night, somebody else who hadn't spoken before said to me, oh, don't know what that was all about at all. Middle class, blah, blah. he's probably the same, but he was really upset at what the person had done or tried to do. So it's been interesting and it continues to be interesting. But it sounds that you not only what I'm taking from you here is not just about the <clears throat> about the, the, the joy of singing, but actually there's an education, there's an empowerment, there's a learning that everyone can take from it as well, um, which is which is really quite powerful. One of the things that I say about myself on LinkedIn is that I'm an EDI champion. I'm an equality, diversity, inclusivity champion. Don't ask me where I got the word, word from or the phrase from. I just made it up and put it on there because I, I like to argue and, and stand my ground and also insist that people accept my viewpoint. I'll listen to yours. Yeah. Obviously, if I'm going to do that with mine, then I need to be able to take it. But I, I find a lot of people want it to just go their way. Yeah, yeah. And that can be in a boardroom, that can be in an office, it can be on the street at a, a bus stop. A bus stop, listen to me, I'm taking trains and I'm clocking as I'm queuing, waiting to get onto the train, I'm clocking how many people are being let through, first of all. Now, first of all, I might not look like it, but I own a senior rail card. And I'm watching all these other looking like seniors get allowed in. I ain't getting no allowance. That is EDI. That is me having to step into my role and say, excuse me, <laughs> I'm going to go next. And the guy goes, huh? I'm like, thank you. Don't we all do that? Yes. No, that we, we don't all do it everywhere we go. And I can't do it everywhere I go, but it really is about that where I'm working as well as what I'm saying. Yeah, standing your ground, making your presence felt in a positive way. And actually, uh, yeah, yep. that's um, that's a real positive learning that a lot of people can take from as well. So that's important. That's important. Well done to you. So I, I was Sorry. going to... Either that going... or I'm really miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was going to a few people. I was going to a few people when I mentioned AMC and, you know, they, they kind of nod positively at either what they've experienced by being at one of your events or even if they've seen you know if they've been there live or they may have seen one of the performances where amc have performed on tv what was the original vision for amc and uh, does that still is it still the same vision or have you kind of broadened into something else wow that's a really really good question how um i think I'd like to believe I always felt that there was space for, bear with me, there was space for the supernatural every time you perform. And you know, when you're at church, you're at a service and my experience of music making is not, is not always that the best is, is pristine and accurate and it's about the heart and how much feeling can go into it. And we will let people sing themselves, you know, through every single key change and still applaud them and still have a sense in our, in our church environment of having had a good time listening to them. I wanted to marry that with musical excellence, which is why I went back to university to study so I could get deeper in harmony, get deeper in my theory and really understand some of the crunchy harmonies that I would generally hear in the musician's section, not always in the vocal section. And whenever I did, it was usually from a church or choral background of quite excellent uh, skills, basically, sometimes Euro classical. If it was ever Afro classical music, it was usually, say, SDA churches, churches that generally will read their music first and maybe then put it to memory or however they learn, they're actually going for, you know, like your take six harmonic yeah, structure. Yeah. And in my head, I love that sound, but I wanted to understand how it all comes together and how it matches with the music in the instrumentation. And I wanted to get it. I didn't want to be guessing. Um, so when I went back to uni, that's why I went. I went to learn. I went to learn the stuff that I didn't know, but I already knew that I knew a lot because my oral awareness and a lot of the, the church folk that I'm aware of 
we don't need to read music. We need to listen to things a few, few times and then put it to memory. Then we're going to play. We're going to play like we just come from heaven. And that for me is a natural backdrop. I'm used to that. When I went to study, they were in lessons to learn how to do that. So I was at the lessons that they already were happy to say, I know that. I was getting into that and doing extra extra courses, extra classes on that section. But when it came to oral awareness and other harmonic work, I was people like myself who was there. Um, Peter Daly was there while I was there, if you know Peter. Oh yeah. There were quite there were a few of us who were there. And those people don't mess about. None of us yeah. out of there. Derek Wallace, a guitarist, none of us went in there to mess about. Everybody knew why we were there. We wanted to share what we knew, but we wanted to get deeper in what we thought we knew. Sure. So my whole starting of AMC was to create something which was special, could go into the supernatural, but technically would know what it was about. And that every singer would be gearing themselves up for a technical experience mm -hmm. a vocally correct technical experience at the same time as dealing with the supernatural still so we're still going to usher in but we're going to breathe properly we're going to do certain shapes and other things all because i could tell them how and that was the starting point we then went into a bit of a jazz session with um an american gospel artist that i bumped into called howard mccrary and he's amazing oh, yeah. he's in japan now but he did BVs on Michael Jackson albums. He's worked with Quincy Jones. Honestly, he, he's just, he was an amazing influence. And he actually gave me my choir name. Okay. So we were opening, doing some BVs for him while he was opening at Ronnie Scott's when they first opened it in Birmingham, about 1993, four. And he, I had an idea to put a choir together, but I just put the choir together. And then he gave me an actual outlet to, a performance in that sort of stage, which was nothing like the church stage, nor, you know, you put your own choir concert yeah. together somewhere outside of church. That's still a different level to Ronnie Scott's. We were, we were at Ronnie Scott's within the first year, all because of Howard. Wow. And he kept saying to me, what are you going to be called? What are you going to be called? And I was thinking, you know, all these creative names about the clouds and the this and the that. And he just went, right, you're going to be called Audrey Mattis Corrala. I went, huh? No, you can't do that. I felt away because we don't really use our names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quiet. Whereas in America, he said, no, 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 no. This is why you're going to do this. You are Audrey Mattis to me. And a chorale is in his describe what the chorale is like. I'm like, okay, okay. But I don't want you to do it. He said, but just think about it this way. If you create it and you have a name, when that, when those people leave, that name dies. But if you call it after yourself, wherever you go, you've got that choir. And it was the best piece of advice I ever took. Mm -hmm. And that's how the choir got its AMC. That's how it started out at the college, bumped into him, started doing weddings straight away. Didn't even know that choirs could do weddings and started getting paid. Yeah, yeah. So that was interesting because we were doing things and we would kind of get a little, you know, patty and drink. And when you get back, you, <laughs> you have to run back into service the following morning with your tired self. And, you know, it was a complete, complete turnaround to what I've been used to singing with another choir, Highgate Gospel Choir that I was with for many years before that. So doing my own thing on my terms, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing. So you mentioned when you started, Ben, so Really, you should be celebrating celebrating thirty years. Thirty years of us. We've done, <laughs> um, we kind of did a quiet thing. I don't think I did a proper thing, but yeah, I guess yeah. we should. Have done. Well, you, you've you've been around. You've been in the industry. You've been doing music for a long time. So we want to. We, we, everything should be celebrated, right? So you, you're a big woman. We can celebrate it, right? <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can do that. We can do that. So you said that from churches to festivals, from you know restaurants to private events, you, you have been consistent in bringing uh, quality music to the masses. And I was going to ask you if there's a particular mantra that you go by that kind of, as it were, that goes in your mind. And I just typed one down. And as I was talking to you, I was thinking musical delivery through excellence. Oh. Just so you, because, you know, what you continue to do, you, you want to, not that you want to be the best, but you want to give people the best. Would that be right? I want, 
As far as the UK is concerned, I want AMC to be up there amongst the top choirs. So we know there are lots of choirs that want to go and gig as agency choirs, but membership choirs, there aren't that many. And so I believe that AMC is, a, is well up in the top ranks of the, the better choirs that call themselves member, membership choirs. Um, the excellence, if you want to stay in that, in that level of, you know, it's, it's not really written about or spoken of in that way because we have humble people. You know, I speak often to other choir directors and they're amazing. They're amazing soloists, gifted arrangers. One of the few things I'll say of the people, what I don't experience with the, with the top people is pride. They're very humble people. You can talk, they'll talk to anybody. Somebody says to me, you know, oh, that person, oh, this or that. It's usually a perception. But when you speak to them for yourself, yeah. that's not what they're about. Do you know what I mean? Sure. I've heard so many things about myself through people who worked with me or thought they were working with me when I was doing like a mass choir or something. When all they really know about me is me walking into a room and going through four or eight songs with them and telling them when they were, weren't doing so well and then celebrating when they got something right and then walking off the stage again or walking back out to, to where my friends are. Do you know what I mean? So how do they really know who's who? It's a perception. Sure. So they just see us in this big role and we're in charge of something. We produce something. We're directing, we're leading. And people just think that we're bossy because they only see us when we're directing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But many people who know me know that I'm amongst the foolish of the fools. And I just love to see people enjoy themselves, do whatever they're doing. I love cooking for people, I love to feed them, I love to give them drink and all kind of thing, carousing. I love it all. And <laughs> I am still able to go back and want excellence. Okay, that's enough now. Yeah. Let's get back to it. So you've got to know how to compartmentalize, I think, yeah. and make sure that everything is still moving forward. I'm very, I think I was better at it. I'm getting a little soft now, but I think I was better at pushing people along. What I'm at at the moment is I'm at a position where I want to pe- I want to get people alongside me to do all of that so I don't have to deliver it all the time. Sure. And I think I'm there now because that we can be gigging in Manchester, Birmingham, a couple of different places, three, never done four in a day, but we can be doing three different gigs in a day quite easily now because the team is big enough and there are enough people there to lead. I don't need to be everywhere. And sometimes yeah, they actually, I was unwell. I was unwell recently and I couldn't go anywhere and they still did all the gigs. Okay. To them. Good. Good. Yeah, well done. So talking of Manchester, you're, for me, you're probably, I, I'm, I probably know of you most uh, distinctively through being in Manchester, events in Manchester and, and the Manchester Camerata, which we were talking about as well. Um, and you're now going to be doing this year three events. Is this the first time you've done three around Christmas or three so locations? That, that same pr- production, yes, it's the first time. So tell us briefly about you're going to be in Manchester, you're going to be in Birmingham and somewhere south from Walden, is that correct? Yep. Yeah, it's down, down south Essex Way, I think. Yeah, yeah. Essex, Hertfordshire, around, around that area. So tell us about your work with the Camerata and talk us through what's going to be happening in December. So Manchester Camerata and AMC are actually called up. They, we are linked through their artistic um, programme and they link themselves with other individuals or groups that they believe will enhance their, their work across a year now i thought it would have been just for a year but we've been linked to them linked with them for oh maybe about seven or seven seven ish years now and as part of that collaboration or relationship we try to work together they put us in their programming across the year so we already worked with them through an event called hacienda classical which is a house meets gospel meets classical meets band event and we did many many tours we started those in 2016 okay. and we still do a few a year but not as many and we've traveled all over the country we've been to switzerland we've been to dubai with them we've been around the place with them over the time so hacienda is an organization camarata was working with them amc came on board and that's when we started talking 
Camerata and, and myself, the one of the leaders called Sam on the coach coming back from somewhere far when we should have been sleeping, where they're devising different ways of, we love working with you. Oh, we love working with you as well. Oh, could we ever do anything together? You know, one of my dreams and one of my dreams was that along the way of trying to elevate the music that I love when we go to concerts, the people who are into the, in the gospel community, when we go to concerts and when we elevate our performers who are singing their hearts out, we stand and we, you know, we just big them up and shout and scream and we hallelujah, we dance, we do. I was describing these things to her and she's like, wow, I'd love to come to one of those gospel churches. I'm like, no, nah, maybe we could, you know, meet in the middle somehow. And, I had to think about it. I think the next time we were on the coach, I said, I've got it. There's music that we call classic that you would never, ever know of. But on those recordings, there's either actual orchestration or digitized orchestration. And I would love one day to perform that music with the live elements. Yeah. And that's how it started. She said, what if you could get us a list of songs, send us a playlist and let us know what you're talking about. And I sent them a playlist and that was the beginning of the festive happening. I didn't call it festive happening. We just decided if we call it Christmas, you know, it excludes and it this and it that. I ain't bothered because I knew that the music was going to hit home. If I'm choosing Smallwood, I'm choosing Israel Horton, I'm choosing Hawkins, I'm yeah. choosing I'm choosing, I'm choosing. There's no way that music is going to miss. Absolutely. So yeah, I yeah. got about maybe about eight, nine songs together, I think in the end, maybe 10. And we used maybe nine of those. And there was a community element where as part of the programming, again, they tried to get the community involved and maybe teach some young people in an area that perhaps wouldn't be singing as much. I was used as one of the workshop leaders to go in and to form a link so that when we had our first set, second set, they would know me and yep. they came and brought their families and stuff. So we did the very first one in 20, oh, I'd like to say 17, I'm not too sure, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, possibly 2017. Yeah, yeah. Manchester, Albert Hall, which is a beautiful venue. Victorian venue, beautiful stained glass and all the rest of it. And they decorated it with the sort of holly and ivy look. Okay. And there was yeah. a stage with this orchestra, probably about 20, 20, I didn't, 28 piece or something. What is that? Nine of us, 28 of them and nine of us with four piece band. Beautiful. And the place went crazy when we finished. Half time <laughs> in the break time, we couldn't even get back to the dressing room because people were just like clamoring, <laughs> trying to stop us now. Oh. I was in tears. I was, and it's predominantly non-gospel audience. Yeah, yeah. Sounds fantastic. So tell us about the, the dates coming up, uh, how we can get tickets. You, so you've got Manchester, you've got Saffron Walden first, I believe. Yes, yeah, Saffron Walden. All the tickets are through the venues, as far as I'm aware. So Saffron Walden, is an, there's an art centre that we're going to be at. That's where you will get your tickets. That's for the 8th of December. We've got another event, same thing again, coming to Birmingham, Birmingham Town Hall. So I believe you book through them using B Music. Yeah. And that's the 13th of December. Then on the 15th of December, the very last one is back where we started in Manchester, Albert Hall. And a number of different agencies will be selling those. So they go through Bridgewater Hall, they'll go through Albert Hall itself and so on. It sounds fantastic. And uh, what would you want people to um, to take away from an evening, afternoon, or whatever it is with AMC? AMC and Camerata. And Camerata, of course, yes. Oh, take away, oh, wherever you're coming from, I want a meeting of minds and hearts so that we come away feeling proud. We're proud if you came to listen to an orchestra because you love orchestras, you're proud of them and you're also in love with the new thing that you found, which was the gospel choir. If you come looking for the gospel choir sound and the band, you bump into a, a live orchestra and you get blown away with what happens because of that collaboration. I want whoever comes to come with an open mind to just experience a phenomenal outpouring of 
spiritual experience. It it blows us it blows us away every year. The orchestra struggle to not cry when they're listening to the singing. They tell us every every year, and it's their favourite gig. They argue for that gig, just like we. <laughs> argue. I've got to work out who's going to do it, and I use. I'm trying to stick to certain vocals because they know the stuff and the stuff is so hard to learn. Yeah. Um, but by next year, we already turned down other other requests to do this. So the, we came down to three because the others, I didn't want to just go crazy and just be all over the place from one, one a year to four or five. So I said, let's do the three first. Yeah. If the yeah. three goes well, then God bless us next year, we'll add the others that asked that we couldn't get to. Audrey Lawrence Mathis, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, we can follow you on social media, AMC Gospel Choir. You sure can. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, but predominantly on Instagram. Okay. Look forward to seeing you and I really wish you all the very best. Sure. Affinity Extra, be extra.